Welcome to the second episode of Series 20, everyone. We're really happy to have you here with us today as we get into some really great character creation in the game we're covering this month, Heart, by Grant Howitt and Chris Taylor. But before we get into the episode, some announcements as usual. First up, our review drive is at the halfway point right now. That means you have two more weeks to get your reviews to Apple Podcasts in order to be eligible to win our contest. We are giving away a free t-shirt or a free three-day badge to a catacon to one lucky winner. If we hit 50 reviews in the Apple Podcast store by Monday, September 23rd, we will commission a new t-shirt design for our Ghost Shanks to Go characters from the last series. And that shirt will be selectable as the free t-shirt for the winner if they choose the t-shirt option. Now, uh, I know iTunes and Apple make it really difficult to leave reviews for some individuals, but it really does help us a lot and it means the world to us. Every five-star review moves us up in the rankings and helps new people find the podcast. Right now, as of this recording, we are sitting at 43 five-star reviews across all countries in iTunes, and that's pretty great. But that just means we only need seven more reviews, seven, in order to hit that 50 mark. So definitely consider helping us out and entering for a cool prize. Also, if we happen to get to 75 reviews by September 23rd, then we'll be sweetening the pot for the winner. But we'll announce those details once we get past 50. Speaking of reviews, it's just me here today, so we'll be holding off reading the next review until Amelia and I can bolster it together to record the next cold open. If you would like your review read before our episodes, all you need to do is leave us one. We would absolutely love to hear from you. But enough of that for now. With all of that out of the way, let's get on with the show. Enjoy. Previously on Character Creation Cast, Grant and Chris from Rowan, Rook, and Deckard walked us through our various character options after telling us a bit about the game. We are picking up right where we left off with class and calling selection. Enjoy. So those are the classes. Are, are any of the classes or callings speaking to you? I was thinking about doing the enlightenment calling for myself. Great. Classic. That's an excellent, excellent calling. I'm a big fan of that one. I'd like to play a heretic, I think. Because yeah, like you shotguns, go zealous? shotguns are cool. Yeah, yeah, I think I think zealous. Or I might go heretic adventure, like like a like like a paladin of like I'm going to live a life worthy of the goddess with kissing. <laughs> it's always kissing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, but like, I'm 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 going to kick a heart's blood beast through a stained glass window and really not examine the terrible things I'm doing or why I'm doing it, and I never write home to my family, <laughs> that sort of thing. I'm kind but of stuck I, I, between the junk mage and the witch. So the the big difference there is that the the junk mage is kind of is an addict, mm -hmm. right? They are always looking for that next hit. Uh, the witches have formed into kind of not all of them, admittedly, but more of a nobility. Mm. Because they're so important down here, because they're so tied to the land, Ooh. they 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 go all the way from these wild witches who like start growing antlers and running on all fours and like experiencing the heart as wilderness, all mm. the way up to essentially appearing like royalty and like passing um, orders and things down down a chain that doesn't really exist. Yeah. Um, so you fair got, folk in a way. Yeah, like they're more they're more fey, but okay. again, made out of teeth. Yeah, whereas the junk mage is more rehab. I'll be yeah, a the truth fee. Okay. <laughs> so, what are you picking the witch? Witch, yeah. That's not Plus, cool. uh, you get you get to pick your weird alternate form that happens whenever Ooh. something goes definitely wrong. I like that. It's always good. What about you, Amelia? Um, I I think I want to do the junk mage if Ryan is not going to. Nice. 
Excellent. I was hoping somebody would take it. It's always good to do a junk mage. Mm. Well, you took the witch, so... I know about the <laughs> What's left for me, Ryan? <laughs> That's what I'm supposed to pick. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I gotta pick a calling, though. I did Heart Song last time. Heart Song is really fun. I was gonna say, you could have recreated your Spire character as the heretic. Um, so... <laughs> No, so what I did last time was that my character was, um, I did the heretic, but they were, like, too far out for my previous already far out character. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that made you live in a train. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can remember. <laughs> Didn't let you in. They're like, you're maybe a little too extreme for your Jehovah's Witness death cult. <laughs> that's fair, actually. <laughs> Well, I, I think I'm going to go with a forced hound. Hmm. Hmm. I really like the concept. I, I really like the idea that you've been forced down into this hellhole against your will. By for, for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but then you found this kind of weird position of power. And maybe you're kind mm. of leaning into that a bit too much and seeing what the, the kind of moral problems are there. Hmm. I think then I'm going to go with penitent, since oh. that's one we haven't done yet. Atoning for your crimes. Ooh. M- maybe. <laughs> Aware of your crimes. You're seeking to atone for, yeah. Yeah. I mean, whether you're good th- good at that or not, we'll, we'll see. Yes, that is crucial. I'm going heart song, heretic, I think. Because I haven't been a proper weirdo yet. You haven't. Now, the three choices I've got... So uh, we, where well, one of the choices you can make uh, as you're making your character is you have to pick equipment, what equipment you've got, and I think we really knocked it out of the park with the heretic because I want all of them. <laughs> uh, so, so for example, the junk mage gets a pistol that's too powerful for them to use properly, or some narcotics, and the heretic gets either a double barrel shotgun, a something called a relic bludgeon. We didn't define what it was. It sounds pretty cool, or a or a, a blazier. Uh, brazier burning spire black you can hit people with and they're all pretty fun they are neato I'm trying to work out which one I need uh, the, the relic bludgeon it sounds pretty cool because I can I, I can mark stress and then I get better at using it that's one of the things we try to put in a lot of cases where it's like well if you if you do this stupid thing you'll get better for a bit yeah you know what I'm going to go for a relic bludgeon I'm going to be like the idea better. that's just like a big stone tablet that you smack people with. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> sort like of, it's, uh, sort it's of like the old a, um, Charlton Heston um, Ten Commandments. They're like Ten style. Commandments. Like, yeah, like that huge Oh, that's slam. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I, I was figuring it was like, it was like, it was part of a column or a support from some stairs. Uh, but uh, I really like the idea of like of, of, of it being part of a part of a fresco or like part of a building which I which I've tied onto the end of a club and I'm dragging around and it's far too heavy. It's just a tombstone. <laughs> yeah, basically a tombstone, but it's like a smallish tombstone sort of thing which I'm smacking people about with. Brilliant. I do like that you have to choose between a pistol or narcotics because I mean I feel like having both maybe wouldn't be. Well, you, okay. I mean, like you can get both, but you got to be able to afford them. This is what this is what you got in your pockets as the as, as the the scene opens. Yeah. So the the key the key to making characters essentially you work down the list, um, writing down your skills, your domains, all the stuff you get for free. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if you look at the equipment, it'll normally say pick one. Like as we've seen, there's the old fashioned pistol, uh, there's the narcotics, and then sometimes you get something for free. Um, so you note down which ones of those you're after, and then the difficult bit. Now we've split the 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 abilities of the classes into minor, major, and zenith. Zenith abilities are game enders. Yeah. Um, like it's a button you can press that will essentially win you the game. However, it's going to kill your character or take them out of the the campaign. That's that's the the final part of their story arc is activating one of these abilities. Like if you've ever read uh, Unknown Armies. Um, which is a big influence on the game. Mm. This this is a uh, the, the biggest charge you can get from that that changes the world. Um, so in a character creation, you get one major and three minor abilities. Minor abilities will be anything from like different skills you can use, different domains you can use. Uh, maybe the ability to see ghosts. Why not? Um, and major is a huge defining part of your character. And all the major abilities have at least three minors attached to them. So you take a major, you can then take any of the number of the minors underneath that you want that will do different things, modify the way the major works. Yeah. Um, and that once you've done that, you're done. 
Like, that's okay. it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have a quick look at mine. I love the abilities in this game, though. Except that they're really hard to pick from. <laughs> I know we talked about that last time that you were like, that's that's the point. Is that that's, you're yeah, supposed that's to want one of the, them. One of the founding goals of our business is that we write games where you want everything, please. It's like it's like walking to pick and mix. Well, we have we have a, a piece of paper with like company mottos yeah. and goals on it. Um, one of the big ones for us that's always been a driving force is something called No Dead Levels. Uh, because it comes from 3.5, where like when you hit like level 5 or whatever, you get nothing. You get some hit points in 3rd th- in edition. Although, although maybe like your save ticks up by 1. one, 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 one your will save goes up by 1 or something boring like that. It's so unsatisfying. Right? It's not exciting. Like If you're level Nothing 4, changed. you're not looking forward to level 5 or mm. whatever it is. I can't remember exactly what the levels are. Um, but if you make it so that every time you do anything, you're going to get rewarded for it, good or bad. Ding, 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 ding. To just shower prizes. As long as those yeah. prizes push the story forward, why not? There is... there is. Uh, I, I remember I was playing uh, Call of Duty. I think it was Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, a press event, many, many years ago. Uh, and we were testing the multiplayer, and I was playing, I was sort of playing, and I, 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 I shot this guy, and he died, and the game basically exploded. There was fireworks on screen. It was, <laughs> <laughs> Level up. <laughs> and I was so excited from all that noise and feedback. Of, yeah, you shot the guy. Well done. Have this celebration. And like I was being manipulated, it's a Skinner box, you know, in, in in some ways. But there's definitely like we we we're we're dealing we're not dealing with like uh, we don't have full control over the narrative in this. So, and nor are we professionals. Most people at telling stories who are playing role playing games. So you you need to stop messing about. You need to like to be quite blunt about what you want people to do. And so and so you know, as Chris was saying, basically whenever you do anything in heart, something interesting happens to your character. <laughs> And that can be awful, but it's yeah. fun. Didn't say good. Interesting. <laughs> so I have, I've, I've been through. I've picked out my powers. So have I. Um, I have. So my my ability is Heart Song is a core in the blood. So I get plus one echo protection, and I also uh, once situation when I take stress to a non echo resistance, I can put in echo, which means I can. That will that my body will change more. Um, more weird things will happen to me. Things from my dreams will happen in the real world. I'll take more echo stress. That's fine by me. Sounds like fun. I've gone for uh, my core ability to heretic is Our Lady's Many Eyes, which means that when people remove uh, fortune stress, if they're in my party, they they roll two dice and pick the higher. So we're going to be luckier because because our mission has been blessed by the goddess. My two minor abilities. I've gone for ironically vicious. <laughs> You've done things in the name of your faith that would make a lesser person lose their mind, gain the kill skill, and right of placidity. Scholars who search for the lady often find her immense majesty hard to bear. You've been versed in the sacred canticles that allow you to weather her revelations. Plus two mind. Um, and the primary one, the, the, the major ability I've got is communion. So when I, uh, when I give my soul over to the moon beneath... Uh, I, I I roll some dice and on success. Everyone who can hear me takes def- marks D four stress to mind as enemies and friends, and I've upgraded that with one minor, which is I shall have no fear. And when I use it, I I basically get armor. I take less I, I take less uh, damage to to blood. So my main plan for this is to run around, start muttering, start speaking in tongues, and then murder people with a big stick. <laughs> very very difficult character to play. Um, how many? Minor beats are we supposed to pick two? Uh, yeah, you pick two. Oh, so you can pick uh, pick minor or major, uh, whatever whatever beats you'd like. Uh, major is just generally it's... harder to to get, so it's advised that you take some minors early. But it's at up to the, you what you do at the start of each session. You can uh, you you pick two beats, mm. and okay. then uh, you can uh, you you don't get to pick any new beats until the start of the next session. So there's a limit to how much you can advance per per session. Interesting. Okay. So it's one major and two minor? Uh, three minor, one major advance. Oh, okay. Oh, no. So many things to choose. You can draw... So you, uh, your minors can come from the from the first half of the character, uh, which is like the, the skills and advances, or you can upgrade a major you've got with a minor. So they can sort of plug into those and give you more different different ways of using them, or uh, they make them more powerful, etc. Nice. That sounds horrible. What? Rejoining of Sundered Flesh. Mm. Yeah, it's one of the few heals in the game. Hey, I can heal you, but it's going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> Listen, your arm's gonna scream. You mean I'm gonna scream because of the arm? No. No. <laughs> no. How are no. you with lots of mouths on your arm now? Uh huh. Because that's happened. Hey, hey, you liked having one mouth. Well, you're gonna love your arm. <laughs> <laughs> Two is better, right? It's more efficient. <laughs> more is always better. It's more efficient. You don't need to move the food to your to, to, to your face mouth anymore. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because your wrist yeah. mouth does it for you. Pulse so horrifically. If you up grow your a mouth on your arm, does it create a separate digestive tract within your body? I'm gonna say yes. yes. Awesome. Yeah. That's oh, science. That's awful. That, yeah, that's that's just hard science. You cannot argue with that. Yeah. All right, I think I've done mine. Tell us all about yours. Okay, so I took the forced calling, uh, which means I don't want uh, I don't want to be down here, but I don't have any choice. So I'm thinking a prisoner of some description. This is kind of their uh, sentence was to be sent down here. Like either they've just been dumped down here just to be forgotten about, or that sort of okay, we'll knock half the time off your sentence if you do this for us. Mm. Oh, this is Spires Australia. Yeah, but worse yeah. than Australia. <laughs> Um, so the so I've taken a minor beat, which is uh, do something dangerous to conceal your past, because I kind of like the idea of a character that's actually not not repentant, but doesn't want people knowing how bad a person they've been. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've also taken a major beat, which is learn or possess something that lessens the control your masters have over you, mm. because I want to see what happens with that relationship to somebody that's outside of of this nightmare. Mm. Um, and because I've got force, that gives me a power called collateral, which is once possession, when I would mark stress, allocate it to the nearest friendly target instead. So it doesn't hit me, it'll hit one of you. It doesn't sound friendly for long. No, uh, definitely <laughs> not. Um, and then with the Hound, I've chosen a standard issue Legrand rifle, uh, which is a fairly expensive to fire rifle, but it's one of the few long range working uh, rifles in the heart. So they've got a good bit of range. Um, being a hound uh, just naturally gives me the ability to wave my badge around, uh, which means that I am, I'm essentially like a really crap version of Judge Dredd in that what I say is law, mm. um, even if I've just made that up. So some places will hate me. Uh, some places will love me because I'm a, a bastion of law and order, but most people just do what I say begrudgingly. Mm. Um, then I've taken the major ability Condemnation. Uh, you, you have the authority to declare someone as a wanted criminal. Once per session, when you find evidence of someone or something's crimes, you can condemn them. When you or another hound tracks down a condemned target, roll with mastery. So I'm very good at tracking people who are criminals. However, I've taken two of the upgrades from Condemnation, which are Judge and Jury. The Judge upgrade gives me the discern skill, making me even better at tracking that person. And Jury means I no longer need any evidence at all to condemn a target. So I can just make it up. Mm. And the minor I've taken is Liquid Courage, uh, which means that I've developed a bit of a drinking habit. But because of that, I'm slightly more sane. Because I'm just in my own head rather than dealing with whatever's trying to infect my head. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, that is my hound. Mm. Is, he, is, is he Ray Winston? I don't. I'm not thinking Ray Winston. I'm thinking slightly scrappier. Like I'm very. Cillian Murphy. Yeah, yeah, we'll go that route. Like, yeah, but definitely not talented Cillian Murphy era. Before that, we're talking like Batman era. Okay. Um, he was. I, yeah, you know what? Yeah. I was about to say. Well, he had a bad. No, actually, that film was pretty good aside from him. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I like the idea that like he's been sent down here for a purpose. Like what? What that purpose is? Yeah, I don't know. Mm. But one of the first things he ended up doing is trying to assimilate himself into a, into a haven, into a safe place. Um, he, as he always does, comes up across with the law and ended up getting himself a hand badge. How, a does, how, does his, how do his masters communicate with him now, dear? So I'm seeing a kind of like a heart version of a messenger pigeon. Mm-hmm. Like I like the idea that he gets like threatening notes attached to animals, like... <laughs> like, it's not like it's like a piece the side of, of a dog. word written on it, but like, yeah, <laughs> oi! But like, 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 like a raven just lands next to him, and he's like, ah, oh, come on, really? I like, I like that. So, like, like a raven lands next to him and <laughs> retches up a pigeon's leg with a message on it. <laughs> it's eaten the important pigeon, <laughs> but at least it left the note. Yeah, yeah. it's mm-hmm. a good, it's a good raven. <laughs> Ryan, have you? Made your choices, or do you want me to go? Um, I'm still figuring out what they all mean, but you can go for now. Okay. Um, so, I picked the... See, now I gotta keep scrolling back up, though. 
And then I keep forgetting what page. If you could go ahead and, like, have the book out so I don't have to scroll, that'd be great. Sauce. Um, So I picked um, The Penitent Calling. Mm -hmm. Um, And for the uh, minor beats, I picked um, Deny Yourself an Opportunity and um, Interact with Someone Who Hates You. Because... I really wanted that. And this is sounding like quite a quite a haveny game. This is sounding quite like, but with, with Chris's character and the fact that both your both your ones in, uh, seem to include NPCs in some way, I can see this focusing quite heavily around trying to keep a place safe. But also, like, I mean, don't forget, my character isn't actually a hound, as it were. Well, yes, true. I mean, you are now. Yeah, exactly. But like, is that how that works? <laughs> didn't, yes. But didn't go in for the, perhaps the, like, the, I'm here for the justice and the right of this. Like, yeah, I'm the police. Yeah. Sure. And I, I like, I quite, I quite like the idea that he doesn't know what the police do down here. Yeah. And so people will be like, well, you have to do this. You're a police officer. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Have so to I think, do I think that works really well with Amelia's uh, interacting with an NPC who hates you for what you've done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, that immediately gives you some backstory. So yeah, absolutely. A, a penitent junk mage. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for my equipment, I picked narcotics because mm-hmm. that sounded fun. I just like having pockets full of things. Um, uh, the core ability is um, you crave the touch of what others call madness. The glimpse of – hold on. I can't read this in front of my microphone. The glimpses of truth that ravage your frail mortal mind give you unimaginable power. When your mind stresses for higher, you roll with mastery when casting spells from this class. That's so good. So the more mad you get, the better you are at going mad. Mm. Yep. It's beautiful. Um, And then for minor abilities, if I can read my writing, I picked um, Wretched and Glorious. Your body is a prison, and when it blurs or breaks, you feel closer to your patrons. You gain the cursed domain. When you cast a spell whilst in a cursed area, you roll with mastery. And then I picked Mark of Hunger. You can taste the power slumbering in the city beneath, and you want it more than anything. You gain the Delve skill. A proper adventurer type with the Delve mm. skill. Mm-hmm. What was your... What are you penitenting for? Um, you, what, oh, actually, who did you upset? Who did I upset? Hmm. That's an excellent question. We'll come back. Okay. I'll have to think about it. I feel mouth? like we haven't defined a whole lot of our, no, our world yet. Mm. So, mm-hmm. uh, What was the major you picked? Oh, yeah. um, I picked the Drowned Queen's Curse. Mm-hmm. Nice. The queen is dead. Long live the queen. You can interact with ghosts and spectral creatures as though they were physically present. In addition, you learn the following spell. Roll plus discern an occult to find the greatest source of death resonance nearby. Ooh. Excellent. That kind of goes well with uh, something I picked for my character. Oh, yes. Tell us about yours. Okay. So I, I had to go back and pick a minor my minor beats because I forgot about that. Okay. Let's see here. So uh, my character is the witch with the enlightenment calling. Um, and let's see. She has... Um, so for Enlightenment, once per session, I can do some cool stuff. Um, but for the beats that I have is uh, gain favor with a faction that can help you learn more about your goal. Mm-hmm. And gain access to knowledge that someone tried to conceal. Awesome. I, thought, I thought those would be kind of interesting. Yeah. And then for my skills, I got uh, Mend, Discern, and Compel. I uh, started with the Cursed Domain because that's fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for my equipment, I picked the gnarled staff, uh, cause that just sounded cool to walk around with that. Um, and I didn't know what the, uh, sacred athame, uh, an athame is a traditional athame. witch's dagger. Okay. That makes sense. I saw cruel too on there and I was like, Hmm, I don't want a cruel weapon. No, oh, the, Ryan. The nods oh, nice. oh, Ryan. Because <laughs> it's defensive. It's got it's got the um, blocking abilities on it, so it makes you a little bit more more defensive rather than antagonistic mm-hmm. with the weapon. Yeah, that's kind of what I was picturing for this character. Mm. Um, I also just like witches who beat people over the heads with their sticks. Right? Like, mm-hmm. mm. it's a good trope. Yeah. So uh, core, core things that the witch has is crucible. Uh, you bring the energy of the heart inside yourself and transmute it into crimson power. I love that description. <laughs> um, 
so I can uh, basically cast spells, right? Uh, using can, blood power, right? You, you can cast yes. spells better. Yeah. yeah. So by, what it means by risking that, your own body. Yeah. You 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 run this sort of tightrope between either just getting rid of a load of the the, the problems that you're you're running into, mm-hmm. or getting more stressed on by it and more powerful. Mm-hmm. So it's this kind of oscillating up down power. Oh, cool. Um, and I also get true form. Yep. Uh, your skin skitters with barely contained power, the heart's blood within you, waiting to remake you as a flickering, hungry zeotrope horror. When you suffer a major fallout, the stress pushes you into your true form. That's remarkable. Yeah, so witches have this, um, like if you've ever seen the horror film Mama, that's a lot lot of the the inspiration for this. Um, you're this bizarre, like, ring-style, awful nightmare horror is your true form. Oh, fun. And you're normally, like, 99% of the time, you have a glamour up that makes you look normal. Yep. And you interact. But when something pushes you to breaking point, you can't keep the glamour up anymore. That's amazing. So, so you just it just fractures, and suddenly you become this awful, like, bent backwards thing that's talking out of 13 mouths and mm-hmm. singing the song that ends the universe. Um, but you can also do it intentionally. Oh, wow. So you could just go, yeah, you know what? I really need that extra bit of scary. Uh-huh. And you, you can't just, turn it off intentionally. You can't turn it off intentionally. You can turn it on intentionally. Yeah. So it's a, a, at the end of the current situation, you revert to your humanoid mm. form. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I love that down. it apply, implies that this doesn't have to be humanoid either. Not at all. Ugh. No. <laughs> okay. Um, also, <laughs> in, ter- in terms of ancestry, um, what kind of people are you? Because I'm, I'm going to play Drow. Yeah, but I was thinking I like Drow as well. Same. Drow. Okay. I was thinking also Drow, yeah. Oh, very good. Hey! Well, okay. Um, okay, so my abilities that I chose. Mm-hmm. So the major ability I chose was Beast Ton. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. So the same vigor that pulses through you, through the veins of the beasts of this place, pulses through yours. Uh, so I can speak to animals, beasts, and other creatures. That I cannot, that normally you can't communicate with. Um, and once per session, I can declare I find a useful creature uh, who might be able to help us out. So I thought that was cool. Ryan, I love that even in this game, you're like, I can talk to the sweet forest critter. Uh, <laughs> I would like an animal friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, at this point, right, we're, we're halfway to Snow White as Blood Witch. So mm. combine that That's pretty solid. with um, I've got Of Noble Blood for one of my minor ab- abilities. So I inherited the disease from a well-regarded bloodline. Uh, you are strange and powerful and authoritative. Uh, get compelled because of that and some other stuff. Um, and I also have the sight. Your mm-hmm. eyes are red-black with barely contained power. Gain the discern skill. And if you concentrate and stand still, you can see ghosts, specters, and other unseen creatures. This is definitely a very ghostly campaign. I like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I really like the combination of being able to see the unseen creatures and then communicate with them with Beast Ton. Mm. Um, and then I also um, enhanced Beast Ton with the minor ability companion. Um, <gasps> so choice. you form a special bond with a distinct small creature, feeding it blood and warping its brain into a sort of simulacrum of your own. Um, so yeah, it functions as a bond, but it doesn't have to to have a haunt. Um, We'd like us to explain what that means. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can put um, you can put stress on your familiar rather than take it yourself. Uh, so it's, it's basically an additional free resistance slot which, which you can put things into and you roll separately for the familiar. And if something goes wrong, the familiar gets hurt or gets lost or needs something, but you can effectively offload magical power onto your... You're in a abusive relationship with your cat. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's a cat. But we'll oh, well, sorry, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is either. Three dogs. Yeah. A, a nun with the head of a dog. It's a three-headed ghost dog. Just a bunch of It's moths. actually three dogs stacked on top of each other wearing a trench coat. Yeah. Whoa. So it looks like one very tall dog. <laughs> yeah. It's like one very tall human. <laughs> it's wearing a trench coat. <laughs> and they're technically all connected. Oh. <laughs> Oh I've, no, it's like a human centipede of dogs. <laughs> dogs. Only, through, only through the paws. Oh, but they can all oh, bark. Yeah. <laughs> I should also know, I, I picked out my beats 
Uh, I didn't, didn't say this earlier. One is take minor echo fallout, so I need something to go wrong with my body. And two, establish a bond with a heart's blood beast on tier two or deeper. So I can feel some connection between our characters there. Because hmm. uh, I, I, I want to find deer, and I want to be convinced that it's my goddess reincarnated. Oh, there you go. And I, I want to ride it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most important part. I will. I this will. Know. Really good. Yeah. Chris made me take take uh, monster riding rules out of the game, which I'm yes, which which I'm proud of you for. Thank you. That's why. <laughs> that's one of the many reasons why you're here. Yeah. But I've written up rules for the Dragon Slayer class, or the Dragon Slayer subclass of Vermissian Knight, and Chris just like no. No. no, you're not having it. No. There's no way you can keep tone if they're going to ride a bear. <laughs> it just suddenly <laughs> just destroys everything. <laughs> but other everything people, we've worked for. Just ride on the knight's back and you'll be fine. Yeah. Yes, knights that ride other knights. Mm. Until they go electric and then you have a problem. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, technically the one in the air is not grounded. Never. <laughs> <laughs> That's science. Yeah, it is science. And we don't, have, we don't truck with that around these parts. Yeah, no, no science, thank you. We're, we're, very much, we're very much in the rhyme end of rhyme and reason. Yeah, I mean, you can learn things for literally years. Yeah. Or you could just make some stuff up and it'd be fun. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I'm definitely much more into that second one. <laughs> there is definitely a place for both. Is that us? Um, no. Well, okay. Uh, I'm going to be sorry at myself for saying this, but we do have to name. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. That's people. fine. Uh, um, so I, I would recommend I, I hate this. search archaic French names. <laughs> yeah. I was it's just really going to go with Snow for mine. Oh, that works. No. Cool. What, what, what's that in French? Oh, that's a good question. Les snow. I don't know. <laughs> Les, I mean, there's uh, I- hiver is winter. And it also, it's also it's spelled hiver, which is a cool spy reference. Uh, neige? I don't know. How do you pronounce that? Neige. 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 Nah, it's not quite there, is it? No. Nah. Blanche fleur. Yeah, blanche fleur. That's what I'm going for. I'm a lady now. Fine. Blanche fleur, meaning white flower. And whoever's jamming this game, I would like a motif of white flowers, please. No. Come on, man, be cool. Okay, fine. Thanks, Chris. Welcome. Blanche Fleur. Yeah, si- Sister Blanche Fleur. I hate names. I hate them. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a, a baby name book here that I use, and all the pages are falling out, so that's fine. <laughs> I mean, it's um, working. But this one, like, breaks them down, um into groups so I can just go to the page for French names. Oh, that's really useful. I, I have just mm-hmm. linked everyone to French names, if that's something which could be helpful. Oh, have you? You absolute star. That's me. Dangerous. Danger Florian. Francho. Um, you know what? I'm going to say that while I was studying political science, I just really remember hating Charles de Gaulle for some reason. <laughs> so that's what we're going to name my character, Charles. Oh. Charles the Junk Mage. Little, little Charlie the Junk Mage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. Um, sleet, sleet in French is uh, neige fondue. <laughs> that's the <laughs> one. Oh, that's, I mean, if neige is snow, it's just melted snow then, right? Yeah, I guess. Well, partially, I mean, that would make sense because like, fondue is like melted cheese. So mm. I assume that it's just melted. Uh, that would make sense. Neige fondue. Blizzard in French is blizzard. Mm, that's a good name. That is a good name. Why are you looking up snow words? Because of Cause snow white. Name snow. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I follow. <laughs> we need to get you a cult with seven dwarves. <laughs> Please right. do that. I have two names. One that is actually... Oh, you think you're better than us? <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> I do. You're oh, right, the podcast. Big Mr. I get Taylor two over here. Uh, I've got I've got a character name and the name that's on the badge I found. Oh great! Oh, good call. Oh, so I've got, uh, Robert Erod is the character name, and the badge says um, Orfrey Baudet. Baudet, yeah. lovely. Oh, you got last names too? Nah. I just picked first names and made them last names. Ooh, hmm. so fancy. Yeah, pushing the boat out there. Ryan, did you decide yet? Um, kinda. Why am I having so many? I mean, like, like this whole French thing's throwing me off. You don't have to do it in French. You, that's fine. You, you to, yeah, you can just you can just be called Snow. That's fine. Okay, um, I'll just be Snow Blanche. In, I was the evicted. That's what I named my character. Nice. Last time, the evicted. It's pretty strong. Snow Blanche. 
I'm going to swap my name out because I've got Blanche in mine as well. Then don't worry, I've, I've oh, got a good one. We could both be Blanche. It's fine. No, oh, well, I think it might get confusing. But mine's a last name. Just call me Snow. Yeah. Okay, right, you are then. I'll, I'll, I'll stick with I'll stick with Whiteflower. Be your true self, Grant. A lunatic priest. <laughs> as you were born to be. Yes. I was using uh, Google to translate directly from English to French. Mm-hmm. Uh, very nice. You, it even has like little buttons where you can uh, record to record what you're saying, and it detects the language. And then you press a little That's button, useful. and it'll it'll speak it back to you. What? Yeah. We used, really? we, to That's be fair, cool. we used the, the translation, not the, the, well, the, fun, the fancy features you were just talking about, but the basic version of that um, we use a lot because a lot of the drow culture, cultural names are taken from Haitian Creole. Mm. Um, which is a very hard language to get your head around if you don't speak it naturally. Um, so we translated a lot of things over there and then kind of fantasied the names up a little bit. Nice. So uh, like uh, uh, Le Colle, Lombre, and Limier. So like uh, Lombre and Limier are the names for the light and dark sides of the moon for the drow, and they literally mean um, shadow and light in Haitian Creole. Nice. Why Haitian Creole? Because uh, it's, it's, it's a language of the oppressed. Um, oh, well, the, the, Fre- the French rocked up and took over Haiti. Um, Haiti? Haiti. I don't know. I don't know what the correct Haiti is. Haiti and Haitian. Haiti. I mean, mm. Haitian, yes. Um, so they, so we want, we wanted to give it some residents of a, of a culture who had been under the thumb of another one for a while. Cool. And it, it works quite nicely because the kind of like the, the old high French uh, worked really well as Elfa words, mm. as that kind of like elven sounding lyrical. We then did give them haiku as surnames, yes, which makes did. them seem a bit Japanese, but hey ho. But they're lovely. I really like those surnames. Hmm. Mm-hmm. That's one of my favourite things about playing an Elfia character is one, the fashion, and two, the name. Mm-hmm. But fashion is definitely number one. Oh sure. my god, yeah. <laughs> that was the first section that I flipped to when my Strata book came. I was like, fashion! <laughs> well, I mean, like, I, I wrote it after I was on the podcast last time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's pretty neat. You should see, uh, so uh, we've got, we got through the sketches for the Deep Apiarist yesterday, and they oh. are, it's, it's the only iconic Elfia character we have. And they are dressed beautifully. So, uh, like, so this, swagalicious. This gorgeous, like, flowing veil that's kind of like like an apiarist beekeeper's thing, but yeah. all the bees are on the inside. Oh. <gasps> it's really cool. God, I love it so much. That's um, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, what's a Felix? Felix Mial is our artist. And Felix Mial. Felix is knocking it out of the park. Mm-hmm. Bloody hell, he's good. Um, one of the things we really like doing is we like having an artist... To kind of completely do one book, so it's mm-hmm. a un- unified vision. They we give them really minimal input, like less than a paragraph of direction, and say we talk about feel rather yeah, than and say go nuts, draw us, draw us what you think this should look like. And mm. like Adrian Stone with Spire nailed it. Like a lot of a lot of the pictures, uh, the descriptions we gave Adrian for the pictures were a sentence, mm-hmm. and it's the same with Felix. Just absolutely destroying it with this beautiful art you can see through the playtest document. That's awesome. And we've got yeah. I love that about commissioning art is mm. just like sending an idea and being like, it, like roughly kind of this, and yeah. then getting something back that's like that's even better than what I imagined. Mm. You can draw. I can't. If I could draw, I wouldn't be describing this to you. So I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, last time I commissioned art, I did send like a little sad post-it note sketch that was like mm. m- maybe like this. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's what, what I did I for my last tattoo. Uh, it, it worked out okay. <laughs> yeah. I, drew, I drew a terrible version. Yeah, mine is, well, because mine's handwriting, but I just yeah. like brought in a bunch of post-it notes and was like, here, do something with these. <laughs> you <laughs> two post-it notes on yourself? Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were like, we don't understand. <laughs> 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 All right, I think that we made characters. Oh, we did. We, we did. have, definitely. That's Hooray. awesome. Woo. I'm very excited for my not horrible person in this horrible world. Well, just you wait. I know. <laughs> no, but that's one of the things I quite like about this is that it's just the the difficult part is choosing something. Yeah. Oh. Rather than like, oh, does this interact well with this? If I if I got the prerequisite, I need to better get this feet chain or whatever. It's just mm. which of these cool mm-hmm. things do I pick up now? Mm. You can mm-hmm. get them all. I mean, just the longer your campaign eventually, goes on, yeah. eventually you'll get them all. Yeah. As long as you live. Just make a new character. You know, yeah. die, and, die and get a new one. Try everything out. It's great. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us for our heart character creation episodes. Uh, Grant, do you want to remind people where they can find you online? Yes, you can find me uh, on Twitter at GS Howitt. That's G-S-H-O-W-I-T-T. And you can see all the things I'm up to there. Or you can go to Rowan Rook and Deckard. 
dot com. Uh, oh, Chris, what's the what's the URL shortener we got for that? Bitly slash RRD games. Yes, Bitly slash RRD games. You can see everything that Chris and I have ever written, basically that we thought was good enough to release. <laughs> Right. Which is like a third of the stuff we've written. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But there's still a lot there. <laughs> and what about you, Chris? Where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at the Madigan, 2Ds, 1G. Um, but honestly, follow Grant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, like, I tweet stuff. Like, yeah, like, like Grant's, tweet. Grant's Twitter is, is more active than mine. But yeah, like most of the stuff I do is on the website and in online communities on the Roan Rook and Decker Discord. Yeah, Chris yeah. is our community manager. Um, that's that's where I I hold court. Do you want to tell people about the Kickstarter for this game? Would like to, may we? Absolutely, I'm pretty sure that's half of why you're here. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> also, because really <laughs> we fun. haven't mentioned it at all. No, yet. it's fine. Um, <laughs> so we're doing Kickstarter for Heart. Um, this game, the one you're listening to. Yeah, um, it's very different to the playtest version. If you listen to that, um, we've incorporated a lot of feedback. Yeah. Um, a lot of people talked about how it was too deadly and were cowards or whatever. Uh, so <laughs> no, we've, we've given you some rules. So we you don't, don't want die. to die. Whatever. No, we've we've, 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 the My Little Pony game. we've been combing through feedback and we've incorporated a lot. <laughs> no, um, yeah, we really have. There's it's, like it's, what, it's nine classes, eight. Just eight classes, um, a whole load of extra advances you can go through, uh, and loads of details on this really messed up world. Yeah, like um, we we were, we were quite vague about it in the in the playtest, and we like were we've attempted to describe as much of it as we can while still giving you license to build your own version. Mm-hmm. Like like so I said, as I said earlier, it's that first third of everything yeah. of everything, and then you take it where you want. So um, like the heart has seasons. Yeah, sorry, pulses they're called, and you roll to see what pulse it's in, and like rather than like warm or. Cold. It's got like seasons are ghosts mm. or suffocation. So that's fun. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> little things. Um, but essentially, it's we're doing a Kickstarter for the core rule book mm-hmm. um, and uh, assorted extras. Um, but the the core rule book will teach you everything you need to play the game, make characters as we've just done uh, with lots more choices than you've just had access to. Um, how to go on a journey through the heart? How to map it? Mm-hmm. Like physically map it, as well as narratively map it. And create the most awful, nightmarish dungeon crawler you've ever done. Mm. That's awesome. Oh, a, a, a solid bestiary. And a solid bestiary, yes, with some of the saddest monsters you've ever found in a in a role playing game. Ah. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Like some of them, some of them are just general. Like, oh, oh no, I can't kill that. <laughs> oh, the, oh, that poor little thing. Oh, it's eating my face. I, we want to get somewhere between hate and pity. Yeah. Yeah. For every monster, we think. I think hit that up I've had two out of three times I think I've hit that yeah 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 we've done quite well on that one um, yeah so uh, you, you can go to uh, if you if you search Kickstarter Heart RPG or if you go to go to my Twitter or Chris's Twitter as we said before there'll be a pinned tweet we'll be shouting about it all the time uh, and you can you can see what sort of stretch goals we've got uh, take a look at the at the, at the, at the art which we, there'll, there'll be some art which wasn't in the playtest and also there'll be a quick start um, on yes, there so crucial. if you uh, it, I believe it will be for backers um, but once you backed it, you will get access to a quick start. So that will have pre-gen characters. It will have a tightened up system. It will, it will give you a, 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 a an adventure you can play through yourself, but written in the style of R, um, the, the way we wrote them. So again, first third, and you go through from there. Um, and it gives you everything you need to get going right away. And it's free if you back the game. Mm, so yeah. uh, do that. So please do. Please do. that buys food for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're going to spend that money on food and roofs. Yeah. And that's September 17th? Yes. Awesome. And I'm sure we'll tweet about it, and I will tweet about it a bunch. Well, thank you. I'm so excited. Thank Thank you. (laughs) Well, thank you both for joining us. This was a lot of fun. It really was. I love making characters. (laughs) It's nice, isn't it? No, it's so good. (laughs) And thanks to everybody for listening. Uh, And please join us on the next episode for our discussion block. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. 
I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at LordNeptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit oneshotpodcast.com where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker. Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond. Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure. And Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.